Well, I mean, it's, it's a worrying trend at the moment that the Labour parties, socialist parties, have been losing elections in country after country. And we can see the rise of the nationalists in many countries, even in, uh, in my country, in Britain, particularly England. You can see that the, the decision from Brexit is in part a gesture of English nostalgia for a, a glorious imperial past and a sense that uh, a little bit of nationalism is creeping into the, into the way people think. And you can see it in Germany, you can see it in France, and now particularly worryingly in Europe, in, in Italy. And maybe sometimes we can see it in Norway as well. So I'm, uh, uh, I think it's very important that trade unions don't just work with Labour Party, but work with parties uh, which will respect democracy, will respect human rights, and respect trade union organisation. And in my experience as General Secretary of the European Trade Union Confederation, that was, it was possible to work with uh, Christian Democratic parties as well as with social democratic parties. So we've always got to work with the government of the day and we've got to work with like-minded politicians who support trade union values and trade union objectives. Well, we learned from experience that trade unionism just on a national basis was not enough because you're affected by what other countries are doing, workers are doing in other parts of the world. And uh, you've got a big interest, self-interest as well as a solidarity interest in helping other trade unionists to be good. So for example in Norway where trade unions are well organised, yeah, I mean you've always accepted a responsibility to support international trade union organisations. And the United Nations organisation which is the International Labour Organisation. And that's very important and uh, I'm rather proud of the fact that it was the British TUC, very often, that was the founder of a lot of these organisations. Well, trade unions started off mainly on wages and hours and basic conditions, and that's still a very, very important. If you don't get that right, you don't get anything right. But we soon learned that you, you, you've got to take account not just of your wages and hours and what your employer's doing, but what the government of the day is doing, what the international situation is, you're soon drawn into a much wider agenda than just the workplace agenda. And so I guess there's a big influence here now on, in here about women's uh, position in society, particularly in the developing world, but also in the developed world. There's big attention being given to the environment, which we know is under threat from all kinds of modern developments. So it's very, very important that trade unions are able to exert influence and build up knowledge and enthusiasm on a wider range of subjects than just the things that are straight in front of workers, their terms and conditions of employment. Donald Trump was an elected politician. The American people elected him. I'm sorry they did. Uh, but he's in a very uh, uh, powerful position in the United States. And let's be honest about it, he's also saying some things which some parts of the labour movement probably like on trade protection in particular. Um, I think he's a, he worries me a lot. He's a very powerful guy, uh, very unpredictable in some respects, very predictable in others. Um, and uh, he doesn't care, does he, about the rest of the world. America first is his policy, and so far that's exactly what he's doing. We've just got to keep working democratically with our American trade union friends to see if we can soften up what he's doing and get some change of direction in the United States policy. But that's really at the end of the day in the hands of the American people and the American voter. I'm afraid not particularly in the hands of the international trade union movement. Rock me in my heart, you make me to believe that everything is alright in the world. That's what you do.